everybody. Frank Gray here at the National Real Estate Post here with our friend Barry Habib. And Barry, before we get started, just remind everybody if they're not working with Oak Tree Funding as their one and only non-QM lender, that they're just completely out of their mind. They have literally everything you ever want. They're extremely fast. Everything you need is even online. You can even price your stuff, no problem. Their DSCR product is amazing. You have to connect with these guys. They're gonna teach you everything, your whole office, personally, privately. Click the banner you see on your screen, the Oak Tree banner, right down below. Talk to a non-QM rep over there at Oak Tree today. Even if you're a real estate agent, you wanna chat with these guys because they can connect you to one of their brokers that can get those deals done that might not be getting done with your existing loan officer. So there you go. Banner right below, click it, go. How are you, Barry? I'm great, I'm great excitement out there. Yeah, let's talk about some exciting stuff. You know, here's the question. Is the housing market bubblicious or not? That's that's what I want to know. What's the deal? There's well, still everybody saying it's going to explode. OK, well, you know, we've been talking about this for a very long time, many, many years. And when it was very much out of favor, kind of talked to you guys I've been saying all the factors why we thought it would be good. And certainly the market has performed really well for many, many years. But now we're reaching a point where we've got pretty extreme levels of appreciation. You see 13% appreciation. We, we don't want to mistake it with the median home price, which has risen 19%. That's not appreciation. That's the mix of homes, lack of inventory on the lower end. But now home price is up 13%. That's a lot. You got to figure new construction that represents about 15% of the market due to additional costs just from lumber alone. Right. That's adding about 35, $36,000. And then the other costs, when you factor them in, we could see new construction pressuring prices higher. But the thing is, is that I think people may be putting themselves in their own bubble. So I don't think that there's a widespread bubble, uh, at least for the next year or two. I don't want to see appreciation levels at this crazy amount continue. I would hope they'd settle more towards 5%, even 6%, because that's more sustainable and healthy. But what you're doing here is you're taking two years appreciation or three years appreciation, you're packing it into one year. And that puts a lot of strain on the market if it continues and persists for, an, for a long period of time. It's okay for this year. It's probably okay for next year too. And I do see prices rising next year. But if you start to tack on an extended period, the market will get ahead of itself. Now, affordability is still okay, but if rates begin to rise, that's gonna put a little strain on affordability. It's fine right now even though people say it's not affordable. It is actually affordable. When it comes to how the market's compensating for this, what we're doing is we're shaving the home ownership rate. You know, if you took a look at, at California, for an example, and said the nationwide home ownership rate 66%, but in California, it's 55%. They've dealt with persistently higher prices because the 55% that can afford a home is still more than the inventory that's available. Right. So, what could go wrong with the housing market? Well, there's a few things. If there's excessive inventory, we know that builders aren't building that much. Mm -hmm. So that's not really a threat. If some people start selling their homes, but then buy a home, that doesn't really add inventory, it adds activity. Mm -hmm. If they sell their homes and begin to rent, well, that would create some inventory. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot of that happening, mm -hmm. but here's what on the demand side is happening. You had this explosion in births from about 30 years ago which is hitting the market now and next year and the year after. Right. So you're probably gonna see a lot of demand. So I think it's gonna be hard for the housing market to take an enormous tumble, but I think it, people could be putting themselves in their own bubble because what we see is a lot of bidding over asking price that's at some pretty lofty levels. You know, it's not just $5,000 over asking. And, and that's why it's important to evaluate this before you bid an amount over asking. Look, if you're gonna go 10, 15, $20,000 over asking, the question is, how long after I'm in this home will it take before the value of the home reaches that? So is it five months? Is it three months? Is it seven months? Those are all pretty tolerable levels. But if you start to get into, well, it's going to take me three or four years to break even, you could be putting yourself in your own bubble because within that time frame, there could be external forces that occur that could cause the housing market to slow down, to flatten out. And then you're hung out there because now you're upside down in this thing because you haven't yet reached that level. So people just have to make smart decisions. I mean, we created this tool and I want to just talk about it just real quick. It's a bit over asked tool that allows you to do exactly that. Is it going to take me six months or six years or whatever, somewhere in between to break even 
based upon the map that I'm bidding over asking. And it's make, helping people just evaluate this and make a better decision. Uh, there's one other thing that we should think about too, is that people should be thinking about some creativity in their financing. I know that everybody wants the lowest rate, but maybe think about if you're trying to reach for a home, take a higher rate, get a, buy, get a credit from the lender that would put the, or, or give the borrower credit towards their closing costs for that higher rate. And now you can create some money. You can create cash of you know four, six, seven thousand dollars that they didn't have that can be used to either avoid MI breakpoints or MI in general, or give you the cash to go ahead and be able to give that seller more money. Of course, you have to pay for it. Your monthly payment's a little higher, but maybe they want to buy this home. They can afford a little bit higher monthly payment, but they just don't have the cash. So instead of being shut out, you could be creative. You can help them uh, make that jump to that home that they really are striving for, uh, but first evaluate to make sure that it makes sense for them. So I think that these two things in conjunction with each other can be very helpful. You know, the, the things that you pointed out that are the reasons you feel that, you know, the market's probably, you know, not going to come tumbling down, right? Um, all those points that you made, I guess what I wanted to point out is the, the only thing that, you know, and just, you know, better than me, obviously, um, you're the crystal ball winner, not me. So uh, the only thing I wanted to point out is, is that what what could cool it down? What could cool it off? And my thinking is, is really the the, the wild card in this is it, it possibly interest rates, right? I mean, I mean, if rates do significantly go up, then that affordability thing does come into play. Then even though you got pent up demand, can't Stop afford that. it. Okay, then you might see some some prices coming down. My Right? Am I thinking there? And if I am, well, as what's usual, the prognostication for the rates? I mean, what do you think? As usual, you are right. And you, know, you, you do know your stuff, brother. You, you, you've been around this game and you've got great gut, gut instincts. So you're 100% right. Rates can play a, a role here. It's, it's our feeling that while currently you have some upside pressure on inflation, which will drive interest rates, you have that <clears throat> the fed said it's transitory and in this particular case i tend to agree with them if we look at the most recent numbers that we saw which were very shocking on both the consumer price index cpi or the personal consumption expenditure pce which which is by the way the fed's favorite measure of inflation those jumps were very large so what we like to do is we like to break it down and here's what we found we found that a lot of it was due because this was now for April of 2021. So you remove April of 2020. So what's going on here? April of 2021, those monthly numbers that jumped, they were due a lot to the reopening. And we, we know that we've started to see reopenings. I mean, a lot of the mask mandates coming off, people are coming in. So sporting events up over 10% in ticket sales, airlines up over 10%, hotels up 9%. And so you have that reopening, but then we all are hearing about this semiconductor shortage, which is making the cost of vehicles more expensive and transportation more expensive. So computers are more expensive. So when you take a look at vehicles going up 10%, computers going up 5.1%, and you would pack that all in there, virtually all of the increase came from this reopening or shortage that we have in semiconductors that might persist a bit, but if you just were to say, okay, how much does that make up? It makes up 7% of the economy. Mm -hmm. So it's it's significant, but it's 7%. Mm -hmm. If we take a look at the other 93% of the economy, those prices, they did rise, but only by 0.3% mm -hmm. on a month over month basis. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the blending of the two, yeah, it made a big jump, nine tenths of a percent. Oh my goodness, that's a huge jump. But we think that the reopening piece kind of settles in and therefore we see a little bit of inflation, but down the road, I think there's a lot more deflationary pressure. First of all, the Fed's not gonna take the finger, the, their foot off the gas pedal here. They're buying ungodly amounts. They don't even wanna tell us anymore. They've been lying. They said, we're gonna buy 120 billion. It's been a lie. We've called them out on it. And then you know what they did? The response to us calling out on it is they just won't tell us anymore. They removed it from the newyorkfed.org to tell you how much they're buying. And okay. the Fed, if you notice, they changed their language from we're buying 120 billion to, uh, at least 120. Well, at least probably means $300 billion a month. So they're, this is called YCC or yield curve control. So this is what they've instituted. So it doesn't look like rates will get out of hand to us. Now they could bump up a little bit over the summer months. I don't think it's going to be the banana rama. It's a cruel, cruel summer. I think it's going to be maybe a little bit of a rise in interest rates is quite possible. Uh, but 
what we see here is a lot of deflationary pressure. Look, this economy is being pumped up and juiced up on steroids. Yeah. Uh, when you take a look at the amount of stimulus that's been pumped into this, the economy is resulting in a heating up from that. Yeah. But just like last year from the stimulus, by the fourth quarter, it already started to soften. Right. Same thing is going to happen here. What's left is the debt. And the debt is a drag on economic conditions, will slow the economy, will lower inflation. Technological advances will lower inflation. And bro, one other point is that, you know, innovation solves problems. Okay, technology solves problems. So one of the big reasons why we're seeing inflation here, uh, take your, your, your latest Uber ride. Your latest Uber ride took you a lot longer than it used to to get a driver. And it also costs a lot more. Why? Because you can't get drivers. Why? Because they're paying, being paid through the many programs out there. And I understand for humanitarian purposes, we needed some of these, but between 17 and $18 an hour. Now you can't blame somebody for staying home, but a lot of people are short-term thinkers. They're not thinking that their skills are deteriorating and that innovation will solve the problems due to AI, artificial intelligence and robotics. Amazon's not gonna wait around, okay? Amazon will have robotics and say, okay, you don't wanna come to work, you know, we'll fix that. It's not like we're gonna wait for you and say, okay, well, we'll just do So there are large corporations that are gonna fix this and then these jobs will be going by the wayside and all this will be deflationary. So we see deflation as more of a problem than inflation in the longer run, which is likely to keep interest rates lower. Fascinating. That's <laughs> fascinating stuff. Well, we'll leave it at that. So um, good stuff. So we man. see we see good good long term rates, and we see a very good housing market. If you don't make the mistake and create your own housing bubble on your home, patience. It's hard, it's man. It is. So, it, it's so hard. I I feel bad for people trying to buy a home. I really oh, do. It's, it's hard. This is not a great situation. I mean, it's nice if you're a seller, but it's not a healthy market. You know, you don't want to see this. It it's. It, it is nice if you're seller and not if you plan on buying another house. That's I mean, the it, problem. It's like, great, I'm going to make all this money, but where am I going to go? And how much am I going to have to offer on it? It's it's not and, and it's great. actually And it's actually hurting the housing market, Frank, because yeah. what you see here is that seller who would have at least created some activity now is saying, hey, maybe I shouldn't sell my home now, you know? So yeah. because I, I want to sell, I want to buy something else, but now I've got to go through you know, all the problems of being a buyer. You know, it's great being a seller, but you pointed sure. that out. You're so dead on. And, and listen, when, when we look at the overall housing market the way it is, what we what we hope is that some of these plans that are currently out there that are going to just create massive amount of demand by giving these incentives and tax credits and grants, we, we don't really need more buyers. I get it. We want to do good things. And I get that it sells votes. I right. get that, you know, or buys votes, whatever you want to say. But... I think the smarter thing to do would be to try and address the problem is there's short supply and really the fixers of those are people that can build those homes. So can we make it easier or reward for building yes. below 80% of the median home price in an area? Maybe that would help that would help make this market a little healthier. You know what, man? I mean, that's what we've been yelling at the top of our lungs. That's where the direct, you know, that's where the focus needs to be. You know, fix the problem, you know. Uh, we'll see what happens, man, because now they're just rolling out a new bill. They want to give 100% uh, financing VA style loans to, you know, first responders. And it's well, great. You know, all straw man arguments. Hopefully they can find a house. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't want to help those people? And it everybody seems, wants to help those people. Right. And it right. seems sexy to say, put, put something that's going to help you there. But if you increase the demand, then that person's just going to wind up paying more to bid that house higher and lose. You know, if you make more homes available that could really alleviate the problem. But people, you know, it's not as sexy. It's not going to buy as many votes. Uh, people are short side. You know, it's just, yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens. See if anybody hears. So with that- You're still pretty sexy though, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Hey man, you guys, uh, you know, hey, thanks Barry for being on the show again. You guys take Pleasure. it, use it, digest it. A lot of good information here today. Use that in your marketing and your conversation. If you're not a member of MBS Highway, you need to be in that link down below. You can try it out for free. And uh, with that, leave us your comments down below. Once in a while, Barry can get in there and, and talk back to you. For but sure. uh, forward and share this. Subscribe for free for meeting us for the first time. We'll catch you all later here at the Natural Real Estate Post. Thanks, Barry. Thank you. See you all later. <laughs>